So the first thing I came up against, because this was around the time of the financial crisis, was the lack of understanding of the brain-body connection. So these high-performing executives were kind of acting like their body was just the vehicle that was moving their brain around from meeting to meeting. And both disrespecting their, or their physical health, but also not understanding that what they were actually really being paid for was to use their brain, and they weren't creating the best conditions for that brain to operate in. Um, and I'm talking about really basic things like sleep and a good diet and hydration and not being sedentary, managing your stress, etc. So, you know, this tiny organ, if it's not in an environment that is giving it the best chance of doing its job, it's not going to, and a crack's going to appear somewhere. Um, and the first time I really kind of had a big confrontation with the bank was when people were dropping dead on the trading floor of heart attacks. And they asked me to work more in my capacity as a former medical doctor to help with the physical stuff. And I said, I can't do that if we don't address the mental and emotional piece because that's what's causing this. And they just could, could not get that. Everything that you're experiencing mentally and emotionally that's challenging and things like a lot of travel, which is challenging of your body, that that raises levels of the hormone cortisol, which comes from your adrenal glands. And that cortisol courses around your blood through your entire body and brain. And the brain has receptors for understanding what's going on in terms of threat to your survival. So in a 24 hour cycle, depending on your age and your gender, there's a normal range for cortisol. So it can go up and down like this. You know, if something challenging happens, we need to adapt and rise to meet that challenge. But when that level is above the top range all the time, these receptors in your brain basically think that there's an imminent threat to your survival. So there's this whole cascade of hormones and they basically cortisol causes inflammation in the body. Mm -hmm. So inflammation of your vascular system, inflammation around your heart and everything else, gut and you know other things. But particularly around that time, we were seeing a lot of heart attacks caused by stress. This was in the absence of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking. It was all stress. I would define stress as when the load that you perceive on you physically, mentally, emotionally or spiritually is too much for you to bear. So yes, it is subjective. Um, when I moved into business and leadership, people would use the terms good stress and bad stress. And I found that really difficult having been a psychiatrist and seeing people actually break down to think that there's any such thing as good stress. But what I have, you know, the way that I've adapted that over the last 10 or 15 years is that there's an adaptive response, which is a healthy response to a challenge. And we have that for a reason, we need that. And that can be a good thing but that should be a spike. It should go up and it should go back down again. If it stays high all the time, that's not good. So cortisol is the main stress hormone. And this one doesn't matter if you're male or female, but it does matter where you are in the hierarchy of the organization, as I just mentioned. So usually in that conversation that I mentioned to you, where you go into a room and you just feel completely drained afterwards, usually the person that comes out feeling drained is less senior than the person that's had that effect on them. And that's why this is so crucial to leadership because your stress levels as a leader, as a CEO, are going to have more impact on everybody else than the rest of the people um, put together, basically. And the other thing about cortisol, which is quite funny, well, <laughs> one of the side effects is quite funny, is that as a survival mechanism, it will help you to store fat around your abdomen so you know again in the cave if you were potentially going to like not find food for a month then if you had extra fat around your abdomen you could digest that and survive till you could find food belly fat that's really hard to shift so again what i would see with people is that they would say oh i've put on a bit of weight around the middle you know had to loosen the belt a bit so i've started eating less i've started like exercising more and i still can't shift it and again that's when i would explain this is the impact of cortisol, as long as you're still leaking out extra cortisol, nothing's going to change. So, and like I said, even exercising more or eating better, less or differently, whatever it is, 
wouldn't shift that fat. You had to get to the root cause. You had to reduce the cortisol. So let's say that I give you that list of signs and symptoms that you've got high levels of cortisol, which include things like sleep disruption because cortisol is part of the 24 hour clock. Melatonin helps us to fall asleep. Cortisol helps us to wake up. Um, maybe you've noticed the belly fat. Um, because of the really strong connection between the brain and the gut, any sort of reflux or indigestion symptoms are often signs that you've got high levels of cortisol too. And of course, things like irritability and mood changes. What I mostly would hear people say is that I can just about keep it together when I'm at work, but when I get home, if my kids are you know, annoying or my partner's asking for too much, I just snap. So that means you're like one step away from snapping at work if somebody like pushes you too far. So that's not good. Because cortisol is pro-inflammatory, it's very drying of the system as well. So you might notice that your skin's really dry or you've got skin problems. Your skin isn't just the physical border of your body, it's the psychological boundary of your body too. So often stress shows up in the skin. Then there are two main things that you can do. One is physical exercise, because you can literally sweat cortisol out of your body. So you can sweat excel, excess cortisol out of your body by doing aerobic exercise. Um, the other one is journaling. So writing out what's on your mind rather than just let it be in there and keep going round and round. Or if you've got a therapist or a trusted friend speaking it out loud. So it's all about getting cortisol and or the negative thoughts that are associated with your stress out of your brain body system.